morning and welcome. We're so glad you've joined us today on this beautiful day and we're looking forward to all that God's got to say to us. We had a brilliant time with our new series and we're looking forward to the next installment of that, how to break down strongholds in your life. But why don't we pray to start with and ask God to speak to us personally as we begin our time today. Yes, thank you Lord God that you are mighty. The Lord Jesus, the weapons that we fight with, Lord Jesus, are mighty through God. I want to thank you, God, that you make us to be, Lord Jesus, ones, Lord God, who are building firm, building strong, building for the future, building with a sense of purpose, because the purposes of God are being outworked through your people. And so, Lord Jesus, we're here today, here in strength, here in faith, knowing, God, you're with us and you're for us. And we just praise your name this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So why don't we just stand together and sing. Come on, let's lift God's name up wherever you are today. Let's praise him with all our hearts. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty in this world. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup, the one run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your
Good morning children and welcome to Destiny Kids Corner. The story today is The Burning Bush from Exodus 3. When Moses was a man, he left the palace. Pharaoh was still being mean to the Israelites. Moses tried to protect them, so the Pharaoh tried to kill Moses. Moses escaped from Egypt. He went to a place called Midian and became a shepherd. One day, while Moses was watching his sheep, he saw something strange. A bush was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. From inside the bush, God spoke, Moses, bring my people out of Egypt. Take them to a new land that I will show you. This new land is called Canaan. Moses was worried that Pharaoh would not listen. God told Moses to throw his staff on the ground. When he did, the staff became a snake. God told Moses to reach down and grab the snake. It became a staff again. God said, I will use signs like this to show Pharaoh that I have sent you. But I cannot speak very well, complained Moses. God said, do not worry, your brother Aaron is a good speaker. I will send him with you. So Moses returned with Aaron to Egypt. When they arrived, Moses told the Israelites what God had said. Hello everyone, nice to be with you. Before I go, I'd like to say a prayer. Dear God, I bring the lives of these children before your presence. They are precious and valuable. I ask you to bless them, keep them in good health and love. Amen. I'm glad everyone's enjoying the sunshine and I just wish we could meet up. But hopefully, with God's grace, we'll meet up very soon. Bye now. I've got a word that I feel that God has been uh, speaking to me about, which I think will also encourage you. I really believe that at this time of pandemic, it's easy to think that life is coming to a standstill, that because we're in lockdown and we're restricted in our movements, that everything is being put on hold. But I feel that God is saying that his purposes and his plans are still flowing like a flowing river the river of god is still moving and he's going to bring refreshing you're going to find your life is still moving it's still blessed the opportunities are still going to come and you're going to find your life uh, enlarging and increasing in in lots of different ways so don't say to yourself my life is on hold no because God is moving God is flowing he's bringing refreshing he's bringing newness he's bringing this sense of revival on the inside and I believe that as we get excited with the Word of God as we remember just how good he is to us then we're gonna find ourselves in this place of of, 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 of joyous expectation we're gonna have this sense of waiting upon him for what new is to come it's a time of newness for us it's a time of regeneration for us it's a time of opportunity for us so let's keep on reaching let's keep on believing let's keep on praying and asking God for the increase and for this move of the spirit that he's moving amongst us this old friend of mine Helen my best friend my friend Colin invited me to try Alpha y recuerdo que mi papá me dijo mira hay comida gratis ve they handed me a invitation it was just a random invitation and I said like why not why not let's try it why not let's go and I found like a like a really awesome community of people they helped me find who I was just by listening Alpha helped me in the knowing of God empecé a entender que el amor Es de muchas maneras. I just knew. I was a different person from that moment on. I knew I had purpose. I, I felt really comfortable and like starting to invite my friends. I've seen Alpha really impact people that I work with. I would definitely encourage people to get involved. It's one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. It all turned out to be life changing. Going for a walk, I started seeing these brambles and started picking them, but I didn't have anything to put uh, put them in. And then I realised in my pocket was a face mask, and I thought, oh, we'll put them in that. And then God really spoke to me, and He said, "You see this? That all of us know what a face mask is. Now we all wear one uh, continually to to guard against pandemic and disease." And God was saying that in the middle of this crisis, you can feel that that's all there is. But God was saying, no, 
It can be for you a time of fruitfulness. It can be a time of fullness. This thing is absolutely full with berries. And, and so God can cause his fullness and his goodness to flow in our lives. In fact, let's just pray that right now. God, we thank you that in the middle of all we're going through, God, you can fill our lives and make us fruitful. We pray that that will be the case for every person. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to continue to look at uh, preparing for prominence. And this week I was having a look at what, how the church was responding to this pandemic lockdown. And I was really surprised uh, and pleasantly surprised by what I read. So in the New Statesman article and from The Guardian, I saw this quote from Rowan Williams, who was the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury uh, previously, and he says this, he says, the pandemic has triggered a historical spiritual moment. And he notes there's been a boom on the engagement of online Christian services. In fact, another charity called the Tear Fund, a Christian charity, said that they, they project that a quarter of the UK population has watched uh, an online Christian service all the way through. I mean, those no numbers are astounding. Also, I read that the Christian bookseller, Eden, that they ha their book sales of the Bible are up by 50% in this pandemic time. And the searches on Google for prayer and for Christianity have absolutely taken off. And the Bible app downloads, they, they've really shot up since March all around the world. And the surprising thing is that those places on earth that are not known for belief uh, in, in Jesus at all, that they're really starting to surge in those areas that maybe we, we expect that they would know about God. They are, they are also increasing. So all around the world, there is a change, a sea change taking place, which which is great news for the church. And Ron Williams uh, said this, he said, there's a feeling of disorientation, fragility and fear that is caused by the pandemic. So it's interesting at this time, there's shaking going on. There's, there's a change going on. And this is an opportunity for the church to shine. Do you know, sometimes churches in the past have been indoors and maybe people have felt that they're inaccessible. But at this time, the church is shining. People are looking in. It's at a time when people who don't maybe uh, need to make such a commitment, but yet they can expose themselves to something fresh. And the, and the, 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 the Bible and the, and the church are, are uh, places that the world is looking to for answers at this time of shaking and moving. So we're going to continue to look at this Bible verse that we looked at last week. And this is going to be our base text. So let's turn our Bibles, if you have them, to 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5. And it says this. It says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God 
and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So the beginning of that passage tells us that we walk in the flesh, which of course we know we walk in flesh and blood, but the Bible tells us that we don't war after the flesh. And that means that we don't try and match philosophy for philosophy. Because there's lots of political thought, there's lots of uh, social thought and dialogue going around uh, uh, and, and, and lots of things are trying to grab our attention. But the Bible tells us that we don't need to war as the world wars because it tells us that, that the, the, our warfare is a different warfare, but it's mighty through God. Mighty through God for the pulling down of those things that uh, say that they're more important than what God is. And so we're going to have a little look at what those weapons are and why these weapons of God are so effective. So in verse 5, it tells us that the, the, the word of God, this is what it does, it casts down imaginations. Well, these are arguments. And it, number two, it uh, uh, casts down everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And also it, it, it brings into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, like I've said, there are so many things vying for our attention right now. But the Bible tells us our thoughts and our thinking are so important to how we position ourselves in the world and the things that we use as a basis to arrange how our life is going to look. I guess at this time, many people are finding their life isn't looking the way that they thought it was going to be. In fact, that was the same for me many years ago. I'd left home, I'd found myself a good job, a good starting job, but found myself very lonely, very miserable, very fearful for the future, and really not very hopeful. And so I had a friend of mine, and she was a Christian and kept telling me about Jesus and how he loved me very much. Now what she was doing was, was, was sowing me a thought she was, she was telling me the truth of Jesus and she just kept telling me. And at first, I didn't want to listen. And, at every, and then I found myself sort of stirred up on the inside by what she was saying. And sometimes I wish she would stop it because I started to feel uneasy because I knew that if what she was saying was true, then it was going to have a massive implication on the way I was living my life at that time and also what it meant for my future. But as she kept on talking and kept on speaking to me, even though I used to try and argue with her so much, I used to try and uh, uh, find arguments and sort of, if you like, those imaginations to try and block her way, she kept on patiently, carefully loving me, showing me these thoughts, telling me that God loved me, telling, telling me that I needed a savior, telling me that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, whoever should believe in him will have eternal life. I, I listened to these things, still struggling. But as time went on, I found myself meeting people who either went to church or were interested in church. And I found I was having conversations with people who were giving me testimony after testimony about how God had changed their lives. Well, the evidence seemed to be overwhelming. And so I came to that point where I decided that uh, when I went to a church meeting with my friend, I decided that I would put my trust in Jesus. I went to the front and I prayed this prayer saying, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you've taken away all my sin. I believe that you died and rose again. And that Lord Jesus, I have a life with you and life everlasting. Do you know, when I prayed that prayer, I felt such a weight lift off me. I found that the fear that I'd had about inadequacy and about the future just melted away because I felt the love of God. And do you know, this is how God casts down imaginations, if you like, and we don't need to fight. Why? Because God loves us. And God's love just changes everything. See, after experiencing him, I didn't want to talk about or think about anything else. I was just so enthralled. I was in love with Jesus because I felt his love in my heart, a feeling I'd never felt before. And you know, that is what the world is looking for. And I believe is as the world is looking in and as us as a church, we look out and realize there are people all around us trying to find peace in their life. We can just say to them, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. 
This is what the Bible tells us. We can keep sowing those thoughts, keep telling people about the goodness of God. And you know what? All those uh, arguments, all those strongholds that people hold in their minds, this, 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 this testimony that we have, they are, this, it's a mighty weapon in our hands, such a mighty weapon. And so let me tell you, if you don't know Jesus today, then today is the day that you could accept him as his Lord, as your Lord and Savior, just with a simple prayer and a simple declaration of faith. We're now going to go on to talk about how things need to change. You know, as humans, we can very often want things to stay the same. So we're going to have a look at a story that I heard about this week, which so well illustrates how God is pulling down strongholds. So I was hearing about during this pandemic time in northern India, there was a church that had been reaching out to the community around them, trying to love them, but they'd come across such opposition and against threats had come against them. So they would find themselves in this, if you like, locked in position. Nothing was moving, nothing was changing for them. They find themselves sort of, if you like, under attack. But um, during the pandemic time, a policeman came knocking at the door. Now, of course, the, the pastor was quite worried about this, uh, this visit that he'd had, thinking there was going to be more trouble. But the policeman said that the government had instructed him to come and to request that the church make 1,000 face masks for the local community. Well, he was astounded, but amazed that they were given this opportunity. So the policeman escorted them down to the material shop and the material shop was opened for them so they could do the shopping that they needed. He picked up all the materials, took them back to the church. The people of the church started to, uh, started to make these face cloths and they were able then to administer and take these face cloths, the, the face masks, out to the community. See, they had an opportunity to reach the community in a way that wasn't there before. And not only that, they were... Uh, able to find favour with the authorities that ha had quite frankly been quite hostile towards them. But they had tapped into this spiritual weapon, this spiritual weapon, because what they had done is they had prayed beforehand and they'd asked God how they could they could they could serve God at this time and how they could impact the local community despite the lockdown. And you know prayer works their prayer and their their prayer of faith had caused this complete change in the actions of the government and their attitudes and the the attitudes of the people around them in fact they tapped in to this uh, principle if you like and in Ephesians 6 verse 17 it puts it aptly like this it says take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying at all times do you know when we pray together as a church, it's like taking out a sword. It says the sword of the Spirit. Do you know the Spirit of God is powerful, is mighty. That's what the Bible verse told us. The Spirit of God is like a sword. And the Bible tells us that as we pray at all times, this sword is breaking down strongholds. It's tearing down barriers. It's, it's taking away the preconceptions that people have and the word of God is working powerfully in the spiritual realms. You see, this word of God is so powerful. You see, our prayers are so powerful. And we've had this time of prayer and fasting last week. We think this is such an important part of church life is our prayers. And especially when the people of God come together with praying and with fasting. We've seen people moving house that have been waiting for a while. We've seen people being healed that have been waiting for healing. We've seen people's relationships with God go deeper. We've seen opportunities for employment really take off. And you know, God is moving. He moves when we pray. He moves when we use this sword of the Spirit, which is prayer and faith in the Word of God. He's moving powerfully and it's breaking down strongholds. I really believe as the church gets a hold of this, as we realize, as we pray together, how can we reach our communities, then God is going to break down those hard hearts. 
He's going to break down that opposition. He's going to break down that indifference. And he's going to bring hearts and lives and people who want to see what God can do. They want to know who God is. They want to experience that love of Christ for themselves. And I believe that as we use these spiritual warfares of prayer and of uh, applying the word and praying in the spirit, things are going to change. They're really going to change. And so my last point is we need to get a new mindset. There's something in the human a psyche that wants things to stay the same but God is replacing the old with new ideas new areas of reasoning new arguments if you like and with he's building new strongholds and he's building his people to be strong and to be mighty by 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 uh, helping us to depend on the word of God and with prayer and realizing that these weapons are powerful at a time when we can't go out very much at a time when we can't uh, relate to people in the same way he's giving us ways of of fighting this battle he's preparing our hearts for what is to come so what we need to do is we need to put our faith into practice we need to make these words that we believe and start moving out on them. I was reading about a young man and he wanted to work in the uh, aeronautical uh, uh, sector. He wanted to be a mechanic, uh, but he was uh, a, young, a young man. And when he went to try and ask for work in these different, sec in these different uh, uh, firms, they all said no. But one guy sort of said, well, if uh, I'll take you on, but I can't pay you anything. And the man said, look, I'll work for nothing. I just really want to work in this sector. And if there's no paid employment, I'll do it for free. You see what he was doing? He was exercising this principle of sowing and reaping. And in Luke 6 verse 38, it says this, give and it will be given back to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over and poured into your lap. It says, for the measure you use will be measured to you. So this young man had no money, nothing to give but his time and his, uh, if you like, his enthusiasm for the job. So he started to work for nothing. So he, he was given a broom, he swept the floor, he made himself useful, made cups of tea, brought the guys whatever they wanted, the girls where they were working, whatever they needed. He would just be the gopher and do whatever needed to be to be done. And he worked hard. So he kept on asking the boss, is there any payment? Can I be paid for this? And the boss kept saying, no, no, no. He said, well, OK, then can I ask you, please, can I have a day off? So the boss said, yeah, fine, it's up to you. So he took the day off. But before the end of the day, the boss had phoned him and said, please, can you come in? And so the young man smiled and said, you didn't realize how useful I am. And the boss said, uh, yes, you're right. So the young man said, so is there payment now? And so the boss said, yes, there is. And so can you see, because he'd sowed his time, he'd sowed his enthusiasm and he'd given what he had to give, then he found himself being indispensable. And so the job that he longed for came to him and eventually he worked his way up and ended up becoming a mechanic for aeroplanes. So that's an amazing story. It just shows you when you put your, 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 your faith into action, when you start to move into the area that you know God is calling you to, then God is going to use and multiply whatever it is you give to him. In Exodus 23 verse 3, it mentions about uh, people who were given a special ability for creativity. And I believe there are people out there that you have special ability for creativity, for making things, uh, for uh, producing things. And this is what God uh, this is what God said to Moses concerning these people that, that they needed to, to make things for the tabernacle. It says, I have filled him. This is a particular person, but he went on to fill other people too. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding, in knowledge and in all kinds of craftsmanship. And you see, God fills us with the spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding and knowledge. This is a 
powerful, powerful, mighty weapon that God has given us strength, he's given us wisdom, and he's given us ability. Do you know it's interesting at this time of online church and online reaching people, that there's a such need for people who are good with IT, who are good with audio, who are good with visuals and uh, and uh, all, all things to do with uh, with uh, uh, you know it's speaking about God, but through through what is seen, uh, and also this there's, there's there's just a need for people to love others too. It's uh, and so I believe that at this time, as we start to use the gifts that we have, as we start to use these. Uh, these gifts on the inside that God has given us, these gifts of grace, as we use them, then God is going to use what we give to him and he's going to use these as mighty weapons in his hand and his church is growing, growing in influence because he can see a people that love one another. He can see a people where there are specialities and where there is expertise, where there are people who are exercising and doing things to an excellent standard. And that's what the world wants to see because God is perfect. God is wonderful and he equips his people for works of service. In fact, he's got work in advance for us to do, but he's equipped us to do it. What an amazing place we're in. And you know, I know people at this time that are using their gifts, people that I know that are wanting to be uh, married and have their own families, that what they are doing is they're sowing into the families around them and showing blessing and kindness and honour to those around them. I've known people in the past that have wanted to be married themselves and they have helped other people uh, who went before them to, 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 uh, to help them with their marriage preparations without complaining, finding themselves also married. Do you know, whatever we sow, whatever we sow, we are going to reap. And it's a time now more than any other time to sow, to give to be big hearted people, to sow the word, to pray, to be these people who are believing that we are building strongholds, positive strongholds of faith and power and belief that the world is looking into and is looking for and is going to cause a revival, I believe, souls from every walk of life, people watching in, wanting to know, is this real? Is God real? Is the kingdom of God uh, real? Is it something that, 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 that I want to be part of? And the answer is yes, most definitely. It's the most wonderful, beautiful, fantastic place to be is the church and to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. So let's pray right now. We're going to pray. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you, Lord God, that there are people here that are looking in that want to know, is Jesus real? And Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would make yourself real to them, that they would experience and feel and know the warmth and love of God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, if there are people here today who want to make that step of commitment and want to say, Jesus, I want you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe you took my sin away. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you died and rose again. And Lord Jesus, as I have faith in you, I have eternal life and a new life here on earth. The Lord Jesus, my life will never be the same again. If you've prayed that prayer, then the Bible tells us, his word tells us, that you have crossed over from death to life, that your new life starts now. This is the wonderful thing about the Word of God. It transports us into a different spiritual realm, into a different reality and causes a massive change on the inside. He gives us a new life, a new spirit, a new future. I'm also going to pray now for those people who are looking for God to move. That God was going to give us wisdom. Wisdom to know how to move forwards. Wisdom to know how to how to break through at this time. The Bible tells us if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives without reproach. You see, God gives. He's a giver of good things to his people. So let's ask God now that he's going to give wisdom. He's going to give us the words of faith to pray through. And then we're going to see these strongholds coming down. So Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much that you are the God of wisdom. Lord Jesus, that you give it liberally to your people. I pray, Father, now, if anybody is struggling 
Lord God, with any area of their life, either personally or they're struggling, Lord Jesus, with something that they can't control and is outside of their life. I want to ask you, Lord Jesus, give them wisdom. Give them, Lord Jesus, words. Give them, oh Lord Jesus, release, Lord God. Your word tells us that you release the captives. You set the captives free. If anyone is in captivity to anything today, whether it be fear, whether it be doubt, whether, Lord Jesus, it be uh, in debt or, 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 or in a relationship problem, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, right now, Father, by your word, by your spirit, bring that release, bring that healing, bring that power, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm hoping that you'll take those words, you'll apply it to your life, and you'll see the power of God moving. Amen. The head that once was crowned with is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to watch our feet. Now at His feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame now robed in majesty. The radiance of shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our
where soldiers fought in vain was borrowed for three days. His body there could not remain. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name is victory. So thank you so much for joining in with us this morning. I know we've had a fantastic time. Uh, we've loved being together and we've been strengthened by everything that we've been hearing today. Yes, so come on, let's just pray just as we finish. God, thank you that you love us. I pray for at the start of the week as we've put you first. God, I pray that you will move in our, our lives this week and we'll have an exceptional week. God, I pray that we'll hear testimony on the left and right. God, of how you've blessed us and helped us right across the church. And so, God, we thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen.